So here's the thing that concerns me. And if none of this would have ever happened, I don't think we would have had concern over this. But the fact that the Big 12 commissioner is denying any involvement in this situation or being in Memphis or anything like that, it, it worries me for Memphis's case to get into the Big 12. Because on, what was it, Thursday that College AD released that yeah. it all went down? Obviously, hopes were really high, and everyone was like, okay, here we go. Like, this could be it. This could finally be happening. We could finally see this come to realization. And then literally the next day on your show, it shut down. And your mark publicly denies meeting with Memphis officials or being on campus or coming to uh, coming to campus to meet athletic department officials. And so it's just like, okay. So if we believe that it happened, and we're both in the belief that it happened, and I feel like around yeah. here in this city, that's pretty much the belief, is that it happened. He was here. He met with someone about something having to do with <laughs> Memphis joining the Big 12. Yeah. So in, with the belief that that happened, why are they not publicly admitting it? Because And if Memphis was the only school they were in discussions with right now, and they were preliminary, whatever, okay, it is public knowledge that they have met with Colorado and UConn. They went to UConn. Yes. yes. That is, they are not denying it in the slightest. Not in the slightest. That would tell me that Memphis is behind those schools. But obviously, I figured they'd be behind the Pac-12 schools. But behind UConn is kind of a – yeah. that's a stark – that's, rea- that's, that's a tough that's, reality to take. That stings a little bit, Yeah, honestly. Like, UConn, incredible historical basketball school. Yes, they just won the national championship. They're always in the conversation. The majority of the time, they're in the conversation. But football makes money, and I have to hold my nose yes. when I watch your games. That, and that's the thing. Football is the driving force of money for the NCAA. Basketball plays a, por- uh, a part in it, but the large piece of the pie is football. I don't know what the what it's expressed as a percentage that it is, but it's way higher. It's What, what would you it's think ridiculous. it is? 75, 25, 80, 20? Yeah, like, it's probably, high. 80, 20 80, is 20. probably closer to it for and most programs. UConn, Sucks yep. at football. Historic. Uh, they've never really been good at football. They uh, had a- late Big East with uh, Randy Edsall, they were okay. But yeah. ever since then, they've been horrible. They've been and they tried to bring back Randy Ed- Rod- <laughs> Randy Edsall, and they yeah. were horrible. Yeah, they were miserable. And, and, so and I don't think people in that damn market care about football. They don't at all. Yeah. Like, the- and, and here's the thing: I've been, I've been sort of like trying to gauge their feelings on it in general. I don't think any of them want to leave the Big East. You don't. I don't, like. I think the the athletic department would have to think about it because the Big Twelve payouts are substantial, and you could get yourself back on a, a decent level in football. But I I think that the Big East move, for the most part, most of the fan base is very happy about because you Being have there. that you have that northeastern recruiting right. taken care of. Uh, Danny Hurley sort of loves that uh, playing the schools they play in the Big East constantly. Um, so. I, I feel like for the basketball side of things, which is what they care about the most, they want to stay in the Big East. Yeah. But if they go to the Big 12, I mean, there's more money involved, but you lose that Northeast footprint that you yeah. have right this second. Yeah. So, th- I mean, that that worries me considerably. Not only are they denying meeting with Memphis, which, okay, let's – another hypothetical. Let's say they were just talking – to Colorado and an already Power 5 school. Then it's like, okay, that's a Power 5 school. No – but they're talking to UConn. And Gonzaga and, certainly yeah. in there. Yeah, and it's like Memphis should be on a higher plane than these. Schools. Well, hell, but here's the thing. Last time around, I thought they should have been on a higher plane than UCF and Houston. Yeah, yeah, we did. And they're, <laughs> they're clearly not. No. Like, I don't know why they got passed over, but they did. Like, I, I, I'm just of the belief, too, like, and I, I hear this argument all the time, and I latch on to it. If they would have been – if they were going to be in the Big 12, I feel like they would have been in already. Yeah. And it, that's the frustrating part. But I can't – I view it – I'll say this. Them trying to keep it under wraps that way and keep it such a secret, I agree with you. I view it negatively because it shows, like, they either don't want to get hopes up or they don't want to show their hand to the rest of the teams that could potentially join because those teams see that Memphis is joining. They may feel a different way, right. a type of way about going in the Big 12. Um. But Jeff, Jeff, I was talking to him today, Jeff Calkins, and he posed it a different way. He says, okay, big donors in Memphis meet with the Big 12. Let's just say that's the case at somebody's house, yeah. for example. 
and f- let's say it's Fred Smith. Fred Smith in 2016, there was a report about him wanting to sponsor the Big 12 championship game if Memphis became a part. It was public knowledge at that moment, and then Memphis gets left out, so he gets spurned. He feels the type of way. His other thought process, if you want to try to look at, at it through a positive lens, is that this is the Memphis donors saying keep it under wraps because they don't want to get burned again. Publicly. Publicly. And I said, okay, that's I don't believe that, but if you want to try to put a spin on it, sure. Yeah. But I view it negatively because yeah. it, ju- it just shows that they're not wanting to publicly be tied to Memphis, the Big 12. They're not wanting to be publicly tied to Memphis at the current moment. Yeah, optically doesn't look great at all. I definitely, definitely agree with you there. What? So you don't, you don't feel like it's going to happen is what you're saying. <sighs> You don't you don't like the chances. I don't like the chances. I, if certain things happen, you know, if let's say they strike out the Big Twelve strikes out on three of the four, Colorado comes over, and then three of the four schools say no, say no. Then I feel better. Um, if Brett Yormark says we're going to go to eighteen twenty teams, I'll feel pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah. About yeah. It. Um, if all four teams join, I'll feel awful about it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then UConn. Like, I, it, it's just going it, to – it's going to be a wait-and-see thing for me. I, but, no, I don't feel good about it because of the PTSD of every, every other, other time, time? before. Yeah. <laughs> like, That's exactly – Kenny and I were talking about it on the way up here. And, like, obviously there's a, there's going to be a little bit of excitement about it. Of course. You know, it, even if it's been the not all that, like, just the thoughts for fans of potentially – being in a power five conference like that buzz and excitement's going to be there. And so we were talking about that and it was just like, I just don't, it just doesn't feel like it's going to happen. Yeah. And I don't know if that's, you know, just an inclination or if it's like you said, just from it, seeing this play out so many times in the past and it never come to fruition where it's like, I'm not, there's no point in getting hopes up at this point. If Brett Yormark didn't so publicly try in his best way, like he's being sneaky about it. Yeah. I, I truly think that. But if he didn't so publicly try to deny coming to Memphis, I'd feel better about it. Absolutely. Um, but there is two things that give me some hope. One, and it, it has to do with what Brett Yormark has said in the past. One, he's talked about basketball being a driver for him. He thinks there's some potential that could be unlocked by the Big 12 if they double down on basketball. Well, University of Memphis has a great historical basketball program with a – Really good coach right now in Penny Hardaway who recruits big, who brings in big names. There's a lot to build off of. And you're in the FedEx Forum. You're in a um, pro stadium, yeah, arena. pro arena. So, like, there's there's a lot of – there's a lot to like about the basketball program. And also, he said, we're not ever going to be at the top from a payout perspective, like when we're talking about TV revenue. So, he's talked about strength in numbers where you want to bring in a lot of schools that have ability to build yeah. into the Big 12 and make money that way. And if they really do believe in strength in numbers and want to keep themselves in that power conversation in the world of college athletics, if they boost up to 16, 18, 20 teams, I, I think Memphis could probably make the cut in that conversation. But that actually has to come to fruition, right? Yeah, there, it, there's a positive spin for all this, but absolutely. ultimately, I have too much, PTSD. I have too much PTSD, and, and like getting your hopes up, I would say, <sighs> expect the worst, hope for the best, right? That's yeah. that's all you can do in these situations. It, it, people have learned that, though. Yeah, 